Hi everyone, I'm Tammy from the blog Nutmeg Notebook. You can find me at nutmegnotebook.com. I teach people how to cook on a whole food, plant-based, SOS-free lifestyle. So today I want to talk to you all about potatoes because my husband Tom and I... Hello. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, I should say, this is our Tuesday with Tammy and sometimes Tom. A uh, new program that we've started to do where we just touch on different topics on Tuesday based on questions that I get on the blog or Facebook or here on YouTube. So I get a lot of questions about potatoes. We follow a starch based diet. So starch is not a bad thing. Starch is great. It helps you feel full. And if you don't feel full, you're going to keep going back to the kitchen to try to eat more and more. So uh, I would highly recommend the book, The Starch Solution by Dr. John McDougall. So if you're afraid of starch, if you've been following a low carb diet, if you think starch is bad for you, I encourage you to read his book. If this book is out of your budget, go to his website, Google McDougall. Ooh, that rhymes. And he offers so much information on his website for absolutely free. So read about it, discover why starch isn't bad for you. So we follow the calorie density chart for our diet parameters and potatoes fall at 400 calories per pound. They are a bargain and we eat a lot of them and we eat a lot of them every day. In fact, before I started Chef AJ's Ultimate Weight Loss Program, I was heavier. Eating all these wonderful potatoes actually helped me lose weight. Now, potatoes aren't the only starch, of course. You, know, you can eat rice, you can have quinoa, which technically it's a seed, but people do count it as a starch. You can have millet. If you don't follow a gluten-free diet, you can have barley and rye and, you know, there's buckwheat. There's so many different things that you can have for your starch. And I love oat groats too. Those are amazing. But I have a video on those. But today I wanted to talk to you about potatoes because so many people write to me every week and ask me, how do I cook potatoes and how do I store the potatoes? Because they see on my Instagram account that I'm always posting pictures of my meals and I have a lot of potatoes in them. So I don't wanna have to cook potatoes every day. So I do something that's called batch cooking. Now that is just preparing more food than you can eat in one day. So once a week, Tom and I wash up a lot of potatoes and we bake them in our oven. And I wanna to talk to you about the different kinds of potatoes that we eat and how we prepare them. So we have these little potatoes. Sometimes they're called new potatoes. You can find these at every grocery store that I've been to. These came from Whole Foods. We like to buy organic potatoes because we like to eat the skin. And so we buy organic. I've also bought these at Costco in a big bag. They didn't have any this week, but Tom likes to just, he boils these and puts them in his soup that he makes for his lunch and he loves them. I'll take them if we buy the big bag at Costco. Sometimes he can't get them eaten up before they're needing to be eaten and I will just cut them in half and I'll put them in the air fryer at like 400 degrees until they're nice and crisp and that just how long that takes depends on the size of the potatoes. So, but those are really good. They're kind of fun because they're multicolored and they're really tasty. Now, my favorite potato, just like a regular potato, is the Yukon gold potato. So they do have a yellowish color, a golden color to the skin. They are very thin skinned. And then inside the potato has more of a yellow color. In fact, I'll just go ahead and cut this one open to show you. You can see how nice and golden yellow that is. Isn't that pretty? So these have 
just a really delicious flavor all on their own. They don't need anything. In fact, one time I had baked some of these and our son came over and he was eating them and he was like, mom, what did you do to make those potatoes taste so good? And I was like, I didn't do anything. That is just the potato. That's how good these potatoes are. Now, I also really love these for mashed potatoes and the small ones I turn into what we call smashed potatoes in the air fryer. And you, um, Tom's going to post links I'm at the my, end of I'm, this. I'm putting links in the description now. So Are you? Be oh, there. perfect. By the time we're done, I'll have them all in there. Okay, great. I have a ton of recipes on the YouTube channel as well as the blog for different things to do with potatoes. And I had bookmarked a bunch of them for Tom to add. And you can always go to nutmegnotebook.com and just do a search. There's a recipe tab at the top. Click on that and you'll get a drop down menu. And from that menu, you can pick lots of different things to look at. So we have a lot of potato recipes on there. So we also bake these as well. You can cook them in your uh, instant pot. I don't like them cooked in the instant pot unless I'm making mashed potatoes because I like how the oven kind of makes the outside a little bit dry and more crispy. I just like that texture better myself. So um, personal preference. Now this is a russet potato and Tom likes these to make like steak fries out of these and we will pre-bake them, which I'm going to tell you how to do. We'll pre-bake them and store them in the refrigerator and then when we're ready to make fries, cut these in those big chunky steak fry type shapes and air fry them and they're delicious. I also like a russet if I want to stuff it. So I like to stuff it with lots of different things. You can stuff it with black beans and corn and then add a vegan cheese sauce. And I have Donna's vegan cheese sauce. My friend Donna makes a delicious cheese sauce and she let me put the recipe on the blog. And you can stuff it uh, with the, the beans and the corn and then sliced green onions and fresh cilantro and some salsa and it's delicious. Uh, or a uh, steamed broccoli and Alfredo sauce. Lots of things you can do with it. You know, some chili. I have a chickpea curry that's delicious on potatoes. So that's a big traditional russet. And you know, the potatoes get a bad rap because of what people put on them. If you're putting butter and bacon and sour cream, well, that takes this, you know, nice healthy little potato that's full of fiber and vitamins and antioxidants and turns it into a big fat blob. So the potato is not the problem. It's what we put on it. So we want to put healthy things on it. Now, this is a um, delicious yam. It's called a Hannah yam and it is kind of creamy color on the outside. You can see how similar it is, but yet a little bit different um, from the potato, the regular white potato, and it's sweet. It is a sweet potato, and I really love these. These are great standalone as a snack or as a part of a meal, or we like to put them in the air fryer, and they're just so delicious. This is my all-time favorite potato, and I eat one of these every day. This is a Japanese sweet potato. So it's purplish on the outside, and then the inside is a creamy white color. In fact, I have a, some cooked ones here. I can cut one open and show you. And I'm going to cut it the long way because we like to put these in the air fryer and crisp them up after we've had them baked. So you see it's a nice creamy color inside. These are super sweet and delicious. That It's like no other potato. I just can't even describe how yummy it is. Some people say that it tastes a little bit like vanilla, kind of like a vanilla pudding or vanilla cake. It's just absolutely delicious. So I like to have something spicy with it sometimes because I like the contrast of something sweet with the um, spicy like Indian food. And then this is a garnet yam. And this one is called a Natural Beauty Organic Garnet Yam. These are, you know, the ones that traditionally are served at Thanksgiving. And they are the orange ones inside and they're really delicious. They're not my favorite, but I will eat them. 
and I'll use them in recipes. I love to use them in recipes. So, and these are delicious just oven baked or in soup, stew, or chili. So here's what we do. When we have the potatoes, we will make a whole bunch of them all at once. I'll use a great big baking sheet like this. You can line it with a sill pad. You can line it with parchment paper, whatever you want to do. I just do that because it makes the cleanup easier. I take a vegetable brush. This is an OXO little vegetable brush. And I run the potato under some water and I just scrub it to get all the dirt off. If it has some little eyes on it that are growing, I'll just take a teaspoon and I will just run the teaspoon across them and that will pull the little eyes off. Super easy, you don't need to use a knife for that. So we'll do that with all the different potatoes that we're going to do. We usually every week do Yukon Golds. I don't always do the russet potatoes. It's just if I know that I'm gonna make something that I wanna stuff or if Tom wants steak fries, then we'll do that. But we always do Hannah's and Japanese and then if I'm going to need some garnets for a recipe we'll do the garnets and we'll just wash them all I'll lay them on kitchen towels pat them dry because I don't want them steaming in the oven I want them to bake in the oven and then I will put only sweet potatoes together on a sheet because as they cook they'll ooze their wonderful juicy sweetness and I don't want that to get on my regular potatoes. So the regular potatoes like the Yukon Golds or the Russets, I will take a paring knife and I will just pierce them like a couple times. That just lets some of the steam escape so that they don't explode in the oven. And yes, if you forget to do that, you can have an exploding potato. And believe you me, it makes a mess in your oven. So then I'll preheat my oven to 400 degrees and I have a convection oven and I have three racks in there. And so I will do the multi-rack setting on my convection oven to 400 degrees. When it reaches 400 degrees, then I'll put all three trays in the oven and I will set the timer for an hour. At one hour, I will check like the Yukon Gold potatoes that are small. And depending on how full my trays are and how full my oven is, um, will kind of determine how long it takes these to cook. Now, usually the small ones are done in an hour, but I will pull the tray out and I'll test with a fork. And if my fork or a sharp knife goes in easily, then I know that they're tender and that they're done. If it's resistant, then I'll leave them in longer maybe set it for another 15 minutes or so. Now the larger potatoes like the Hana yam and the Japanese sweet potatoes, I always bake those for at least an hour and 20 minutes because the longer they roast, the sweeter they get. All of those incredible natural sugars that are in those sweet potatoes or those yams will caramelize and it just gets sweeter and sweeter. So I like to make sure that those are really done. Now, if you don't cook them long enough, they won't be as sweet and they'll actually be kind of dry. So I know it seems weird, but if, you, if I pull them out at an hour, they're going to be more dry and less sweet than if I let them go for at least an hour and 20 minutes. And um, these, usually are done in about an hour. But two, it just depends on how full my oven is and how full the trays are in the oven. But I don't like to overcook these because they get mushy. The garnets will get mushy. So Tom, do you have any questions? Uh, there was one question earlier about um, cooking a, the full size version of the red potatoes. Of um, these? Yeah, how, time and temperature for you know a thin-skinned red potato, but a, I think she meant full size. Um, well, that's going to be probably about an hour if they're about this size. It's probably about an hour. But see, and things vary. Like your oven might run hotter than yeah, my so, oven, or my oven mm -hmm. might run hotter 
than your oven. Yeah, she said fist size, so that would be a, what I was calling fist yeah. size. So you just have to, you have to experiment with your oven and you have to figure out what the right temperature is for your oven and how long for your oven. But so this is what works well in my oven with the size of potatoes that I buy. And I always try to get Hannah Yams and the um, Japanese sweet potatoes at about this size because this is what I like for a meal or if I'm having it as a snack. So then when they're done cooking, I will take them out of the oven. I will set them on top of my stove racks and the, or the stove, the grates on the stove and let them cool down. And when they have cooled down, then we take plastic containers like this and we stand the potatoes up on end. And we do that for all kinds of the potatoes. We stand them up on end like this, and I store them in the refrigerator open like this because having them open, not in a lidded container, keeps them from getting all soggy. If you've ever stored one in a plastic container with a lid, they seem to just get liquidy and soggy. Standing them up like this just helps preserve them and not having a lid on it keeps them drier so they don't get soggy. Any more questions? Uh, just where we got our hand of yams, I answered it, Whole Foods. Oh, yeah. Now, do, uh, do, so, I never pay attention to other stores. Are they found elsewhere? Uh, um, I don't usually see them in the regular grocery stores, um, not, at least not organic. And we like to buy the organic ones. But, you know, if organic isn't available or not affordable, go ahead and buy uh, conventionally grown. We buy these at Whole Foods. And at our Whole Foods here in Northern California, they all of the sweet potatoes are $1.69 a pound. And that, that is a reasonable price for here. And... Um, I, if you have, I know that if you live someplace where you don't have a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's, because Trader Joe's does carry some of the Murasaki Japanese sweet potatoes, and uh, they're similar to this. If you don't live someplace that carries them, in a, or you don't have a Trader Joe's, I mean, or a Whole Foods, then check some markets that cater to the Asian population because they will oftentimes have the more unusual sweet potatoes, something more than just the garnets. We're lucky here that we also have some uh, Asian markets as well that you can go to and get the sweet potatoes, but I've never seen organic sweet potatoes there. So, But if you have markets that do cater to an Asian population, they will usually have a different variety of potatoes than say a regular standard grocery store, unless that regular standard grocery store is close to a community where a lot of Asian people reside. Okay, Catherine has a question on, um, I have a couple of questions, but we'll sure. do this one first. Uh, storing the potatoes, how long do they last in store, you know, what, after they're cooked? in our fridge, how long are we keeping them in the bins? Yeah, for a week. We usually can eat most of the potatoes in a week that we make because we know about how many we're going to eat a day. So if you know you eat one sweet potato every day, it's safe to go ahead and make seven of them and you should be okay for the week. And when we, before we go shopping, we take a little inventory of mm -hmm. the potato bins in the, in the pantry. And if like there's three Hannah's left over, then we will only buy four or five more. We won't buy a, a full seven. So we do a pre inventory right. so that we're not getting too long in our uncooked inventory either. So that we're turning it over hopefully every week. Um, fail safe on that, on my Yukon Golds, if I have four or five little, little ones that we use for the smashed potato, air fry, which is down in the description. Which uh, are better than French fries. I'll, 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 I, like, like any good grocer would, I rotate the oldest ones to the front 
Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we'll even put a bit of parchment paper in there, so I'm sure to grab the mm -hmm. oldest ones first before I get into the new ones. So I don't recall ever pitching. Um, the ones no. that keep the shortest are maybe the garnets start getting watery when you're halfway through the second week. Uh, so I've maybe pushed my luck on that a little bit, but I ate them. So anyway. Um, the, and the Yukon Golds seem to get eyes. They start growing eyes. In the pantry. In the pantry. Yeah, so we don't pretty buy fast. too so far ahead we, on those. Right. And I usually, I'll buy, you know, a couple extra Hannah's or a couple extra of the Japanese or one or two extra of the garnets just in case I'm going to make something like a soup stew or a chili that calls for having these raw to begin with. So we will do that. So yeah, so they last a week. At the end of the week, if you have some left over, you could freeze them. And you can, like I use the Japanese sweet potatoes or the Hannah yams for different recipes. And so, and I don't need the skin for those. So I can go ahead and peel them and just save the potato and you can pop that in the freezer and then you can have it later. You can use it to, and mash it. You can use it in some recipes. So the freezer is my fallback. That's how I save a lot of things that, oh, that was, that's a good, um, that would be a good Tuesday with Tammy too. My kitchen hacks. So we need to make a note of that. Okay. <laughs> Kitchen hacks. Um, so. All right. Uh, another question when you're ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, which potatoes do you poke holes in so they don't explode and which ones do yes. you not poke? Okay. So the ones that you want to poke would be the Yukon Golds and the Russets. And then if you're doing the red potatoes that are like this size, you would want to poke those as well. I don't know why you don't need to poke the yams, but you don't. I have never had a yam or a sweet potato explode in the oven. And if you poke them, then the really delicious juices it's run way. out. It runs out and you don't want that to happen. You want those wonderful sugars, the natural sugars that are in the potatoes. You want them to stay in the potato because they're really sweet and delicious. How many potatoes do we eat, each of us? And, and we are a little bit different on our potato intake, but how many potatoes and do we eat? And it depends on the day. In a day, so, and, and you're gonna have to talk about types because, yeah. Right, so I always have a Japanese sweet potato every day. If I don't have it in my salad at lunch, I might eat one later in the afternoon as a snack or I will have it after dinner as a dessert because it's so delicious. In fact, Tom is going to post a link where I show you how to take either a Japanese or a Hana and make it into a delicious, I call it like an apple fritter because it has sliced apple and banana and cinnamon on it and it's super delicious. Yeah, that, so, that's actually in the, that's down in the description. It's in the, the description. Sweet potato. Okay, oh. it'll be in the description. Yeah. So I have one like this size every day. And then Tom eats a lot of rice and I don't eat as much rice. Just with my weight and everything, I seem to do much better with potatoes and I find, and rice is a little more calorie dense than potatoes. And I just find potatoes are more satiating to me. And so I eat more potatoes. So then I also usually have some Yukon Gold potatoes. If I'm not having a soup that has them in it, then I will make the smashed potatoes in the air fryer. And let me tell you this, there is something delicious about the potatoes after they've sat in the refrigerator, even the Yukon Golds are better after they have sat in the refrigerator. They make better fries. The sweet potatoes, I just think, taste sweeter after they've sat in the refrigerator. And we, we never make fries from fresh potatoes in the air fryer. We did when we first got it, but they weren't that great. But when we started using cold, already pre-cooked potatoes, they were so much better. There's something that happens to the starch and I haven't had a chance to look that up online to see what it is, but 
It just makes for better potatoes. I was answering a question now. I forgot what the question was. How many potatoes do you eat in oh, a day? Many oh, so Ollie, thank you. <laughs> That's why Tom, oh, there goes that potato. That's why Tom is here. Um, so I will eat the smashed potatoes, which we like better than French fries. And I have a video and a blog post on how to make those. And so then I will have some potatoes. And how many I have, it just depends on how hungry I am. Now the wonderful thing about starch is it is, we, we stay on the calorie density chart. We stay at 600 calories or less per pound. And so starch based diet is great. Potatoes fit in with that at 400 calories per pound. Kind of on that subject. Just let me finish my thought. Okay. That doesn't mean that you can just eat potatoes nonstop all day. You eat until you are comfortably full. And that's the, I think that's the key is to pay attention to your hunger drive. Pay attention to when you get full. You don't want to eat to the point that we used to eat, let's say on Thanksgiving day where you feel stuffed. You want to stop when you feel comfortably full. And so sometimes you need to take a pause. I mean, quite often I am feeling really hungry when I make my dinner and I cook, you know, a bunch of these. And then as I'm eating, I start to get full. I don't eat them just because they're still on my plate. I'll stop when I'm full. I'll stop. So you have to be mindful when you're eating. And sometimes I'll give them to Tom if he's still hungry. If he had a light dinner, then he'll want my leftovers. But you know, he's a guy and he can handle the extra calories where I just can't. Okay, what's the other question? Oh, well, it, well she asked about me. Uh, my potato consumption is, I take the easy road. If Tammy is uh, air frying a handy yam or a JSP, a Japanese sweet potato, I'll piggyback on that and ask her to put one in for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, I eat the little the little round ones. I use a pound of uh, mixed vegetables. I make myself a vegetable soup uh, most days. And I actually pick out six or eight of those little ones in there and I put them right in uh, with, with the vegetables that I'm cooking to put some starch in that meal. Um, other meals, I do eat a lot of rice. Um, a snack, a common snack for me when I'm just cruising by the fridge and it's 10.30 in the morning and I feel like I want something, uh, that likely will, will be a garnet uh, sweet potato because um, they're kind of light and um, have a lot of, you know, very hydrating, a lot of water in them. Mm -hmm. So so mine's more of a mixed bag. It's uh, my, my primary starch probably is rice where Tammy's primary starch is potatoes. But mm -hmm. any time a free potato is coming my way that's already cooked and <laughs> air fried, then I'm going to snap. You'll take it. I'm going to take that right up. It's true. Um, Angelina asked about um, sweet potatoes causing a blood sugar spike. My short answer is no. Um, Tammy introduced me to the whole food plant-based diet several years ago, and all of my blood work, uh, the cholesterol, the glycemic index, all came crashing down to better than most people. Um, it's a whole food. It, it takes time to, for your body to process those starches into usable sugars. Um, it's not like drinking a Coke at all, and you're gonna- Yeah, and, and here's the thing. It's what you eat it with too. Like most people aren't going to sit down and just be eating just sweet potatoes or just Yukon gold potatoes or just a russet. So what you eat with it too also helps with, you know, the effect that it has in your bloodstream. But read the starch solution. Also, Dr. Neil Barnard has some excellent books about diabetes and he also promotes a whole food plant-based diet with plenty of starch. So I would read his books as well and do a search on YouTube because Dr. McDougall and Dr. Barnard have YouTube videos all about starch and all about um, the effects that a whole food plant-based diet, including starch, what it has done for their patients who have diabetes. So we're not medical professionals, so we can't give any kind of medical advice. We can just tell you that our 
friends who have adopted this lifestyle have seen huge improvements in their uh, diabetes and uh, we know lots of people that this has worked for so do some search on the internet and check into John McDougall and Dr. Neil Barnard's work regarding it. Do these guys have any other aliases, any other names um, for people that are looking I for I know them? that in, in different parts of the United States... Oh, they this can, is the Hannah, what we call the Hannah Yam. We call everyone. it a Hannah Yam. I know that um, some people say there's something called a Jersey Yam. I haven't seen what those look like, but apparently it's something similar to these. So there's different names depending on where you live. So I would do a Google search. I only know the ones that are available here where I live, but do a Google search and see if you can find different pictures of different types of yams and sweet potatoes. And then it's great to go to your grocery store and talk to the produce manager. And so maybe they have something available that they can buy. You know, some people have to like order a case of potatoes in order to get the kind of potatoes that they want. But, you know, maybe somebody who also lives near you would split a case with you. So I would do a Google search, search different types of yams and different types of sweet potatoes and talk to the produce manager at your local grocery store. Uh, Marie Townsend is totally in movie mode. She's having air fried potatoes as we speak while she's <laughs> watching us. <laughs> nice. Do you have some homemade ketchup to dip those into? That sounds good. Okay. I love potatoes. I don't get tired of potatoes. And when I first started introducing potatoes into my diet, I was amazed at how filling they are just it was like oh my gosh you know if you've ever been a dieter which you know i was a i call myself a cereal diet dieter for nearly four decades and i was always told to you know monitor my starch don't eat a lot of starch so i was used to having you know a half a cup of rice or three ounces of potato and you know that is all out the window now because now i can sit down and have a great big potato if I want and it's so filling it you just you can't imagine you know it's so satiating so I love my starch um, have you ever read anything about refrigerating uh, spuds increasing resistant starch yes. which increases sweetness yes I have read that okay. yes I have so but I just I haven't done enough uh, research to have all the information to be able to talk about it. Okay. And since today was today's my 60th birthday, and so we were busy all day, and I just I didn't have a moment to really prep for this, but I wanted to talk about potatoes because so many people are asking me how to prepare the potatoes. So take a look at like what you think you're going to eat for the week and do an experiment. So if you think that you eat one sweet potato every day, then cook seven of them. If you think that you'll have, you know, eat two pounds of Yukon Golds, then go ahead and bake two pounds of Yukon Golds. Or make my garlic mashed potatoes that are made in the Instant Pot and enjoy having your potatoes. And then when you put other low calorie density foods with it like greens and vegetables and some fresh fruit and some legumes, you know, you have an amazing filling meal that's huge, huge. Because potatoes are not the culprit. I mean, the deep fat fried French fries are not good for you. If you like that crispy texture of French fries, then get an air fryer. An air fryer is a total game changer. Somebody asked me recently, is it a necessity? No, it's not a necessity. There aren't any tools that you absolutely have to have to be successful on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. I like to say lifestyle instead of diet, 
but there are some things that just make it easier or make the food even a little more interesting and fun. And one is the Instant Pot. We love our Instant Pots and you know, and, or any brand, electric pressure cooker. And we love our uh, Breville Smart Oven Air. And now we have the Milthy Crisp Lid, which I just did a review on. And that sits on top of either a six quart or an eight quart electric pressure cooker, any brand, and turns it into a little air fryer. So being able to air fry the potatoes changes the taste, changes the texture and it just gives you something different to enjoy. We just, we love it. Do you have another question? Al says you don't look, Al Stem says you don't look a day over 40. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Maybe Tom paid you to say that today since it's my birthday. Okay. You know, I'm 60 and I feel great. In my head, I feel like I'm only 25 still. And I'm just really pleased that we found this lifestyle in, I, well, I adopted it in 2013, and Tom came along uh, a year and a half or two after that, but he was dabbling in it with me in 2013. And I just think, you know, I don't, I don't know what I thought I would be like when I turned 60. I guess I hadn't really thought about it. I know when I was younger, I used to think that 60 was old. And now that here I am, I'm 60, and you know I can run and play and and be silly at the park with the grandkids and uh, we hike and bike and you know we're super active and, and this is natural hair color <laughs> yeah and I don't know does that have anything to do with the food I don't know <laughs> so you know I'm just not bothered by turning 60 at all I'm just really pleased to have good health and energy and I, and I love this lifestyle, you know? It's uh, been great for us. Catherine is asking about our, the Breville air fryer. Is it far superior to a regular air fryer, which I, I think she would be meaning the, the egg type ones that have the pull out drawer. Well, I tell you what, one thing that we absolutely love about the Breville, is it on camera, the Breville? Yeah. So I can come over here. Yeah. What we love. Remember you got your thing back here. Yeah. I know. It's my mic. <clears throat> I don't have like a big tumor back there. Um, so what we love about it is the capacity. So I'll just bring a tray over. You see how big this is? So the Breville Smart Oven Air Fryer, it's multi, a multitasking machine because it is not only an air fryer, but it's a dehydrator. It can proof uh, yeast. You can broil in it. It can be a toaster. You can bake, you can roast. It holds a nine by 13 casserole dish. It'll hold a 12 cup muffin pan. I mean, I, we love it. We use it every day and it's an air fryer. So, and it can do a large capacity. And we bought an extra rack so this, let me show you, it's, this is what the rack looks like. And then we use these grill mats, they're called. Um, we have those on our Amazon page to just make cleanup a little bit easier. So what everyone loves about the Breville is the capacity that it has. So I don't think it's necessarily a better air fryer than the standalone air fryers that I think the largest you can get is it's the five and a half Court, and um, they might do a little bit faster air frying because they're doing a smaller quantity and the food is a little bit closer to the heating element and so you know what takes 15 minutes in a smaller one might take 20 minutes in the Breville but you can do two trays like this at the same time so if you're air frying for a family or you're air frying for a large group, you know, company, then the Breville is amazing. And I have some different videos. My very first Breville video, you can see like I can do corn, potatoes, and vegetables all at the same time. And you can't do that in the smaller air fryers. So the nice thing about this is we use it for all kinds of things all day long. And I love that I can bake in it. I can make my 
muffins in it. I can bake potatoes in it if I'm just doing a small quantity of potatoes. And I love that I can do a casserole dish in it. So we live here in Northern California and it gets hot in the summertime. And I don't always want to turn on my big full size oven. Plus, because it's a small oven, it preheats in about five minutes where my big oven takes about 15 minutes for it to reach 400 degrees. So it doesn't heat up my kitchen like the big oven does. So we absolutely love it. Now, if you have a crunch for space in your kitchen, then the Breville might not be for you because it does take up quite a bit of space and you do have to have an air gap around it. So then, you know, one of the standalones might be a better option for you. I don't have one of the standalones and I never had it. When we first got the Breville, we actually ordered a Phillips air fryer at the same time. And then we were like, ooh, maybe we want the Breville. And so we had both of them here at home and we didn't even open up the Phillips. Just be, that was mostly on the size. Right, and, and, and we did, and we made that decision because we thought, you know what, we liked the quantity that you could do and the Breville, so we decided to go with the Breville and we took the Phillips back. But I have friends who have the Phillips and I've seen them use it and it works great. It's just, you know, it's a lot smaller quantity. It's maybe like, I don't know, a quarter of this space that you can fill and air fry something at one time. And then the um, Milthy Crisp Lid also is a smaller quantity because it just fits on the six quart or the eight quart, but what we're gonna be doing with it is taking it with us when we go on road trips. And I've been using it, sometimes Tom makes tortilla chips out of corn tortillas in the Breville, and so he'll have a rack of those going and I want you know my smashed potatoes. And so I usually have to wait for him to get done with his tortilla chips. But now that we have the milky crisp lid that fits on top of the pressure cooker, I can be making my crispy potatoes while he's doing something in there. So it's kind of fun to have both options now. But it's not a necessity, it is a luxury but it's a really it's really wonderful to have an air fryer and you know whatever size fits best for your kitchen or for your budget i highly recommend getting one and for the brands that i'm not familiar with just google them and you can read reviews online but i know the phillips and the gowise get really good reviews and i have friends that have both of those and really like them do you have more questions uh, i think I think we might be caught up. Anita's here, tuning in from Hong Kong. Wow, that's exciting. Hon Hi, in Hong Kong. Yeah, last week we had somebody in Istanbul, Turkey, and somebody else um, over on the Pacific Rim yeah. somewhere, both right. sides of the world. So if you check the blog, you will see lots of different things that we do with the potatoes, because i that's another question that I get because I post pictures of my batch cooking, and so then I get questions, well, what do you, what do, you do with those? So the, any of these, actually, I will use in a sweet way or a savory way. Well, I don't use the Yukon Golds in a sweet way, so let me take that back. The sweet potatoes can go either sweet or savory, and the russets and the Yukon Golds, I do just the savory. So I'll take them out of the refrigerator and either cut them in half and air fry them or I'll cut it open and I will heat it up in the microwave. And then I might top either a sweet potato or a regular potato with my taco lentils, Donna's cheese sauce, fresh uh, cilantro, fresh green onion sliced, and some salsa. And that is a great meal. I like that on a sweet potato or a Japanese sweet potato, a hana yam, or a garnet, because I like the contrast of the little bit sweeter potato with the spiciness of the Mexican food. But I also like it on a russet. I like it on a Yukon Gold. I like to air fry these and have them crispy, and then put the spicy taco lentils on top of that. I have a chickpea curry recipe 
on the blog. I love that over a sweet potato. I like it over a garnet yam really well. I don't, there's just something delicious about that the savory with the sweet of it. I'll turn the Hannah's and the Japanese or even a garnet into a dessert. I'll cut it open, I'll either air fry it or heat it up in the microwave, put banana on it, put blueberries, cinnamon, some of the flavored California balsamic fruit flavored vinegars and they are absolutely delicious. We make the fries out of them. We like, love the stuffed potatoes. I have an Alfredo sauce that will be coming out soon that I finally perfected and that's delicious over the potatoes. Maybe, well, maybe this coming week we'll, we'll see. That up. We'll see. Yeah. We, we love to take them as snacks. When we travel, we will make them up ahead of time and put them in our cooler and we'll take them with us. They make delicious snacks. We have this Road Pro oven that plugs into the cigarette lighter in the car and we will take uncooked sweet potatoes with us and put them in that Road Pro oven and we will cook them while we're traveling and then we can stop and have hot sweet potatoes uh, in the car. I mean, we just, we love the potatoes. So yeah. lots of ideas on the blog. Yeah. You can put in potatoes and, and get the ideas on the blog too. What? Do any of our previous videos deal much with what we eat in a day? No, we haven't done any videos on what we eat in a day, but if you check my Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page, as well as my Nutmeg Notebook Instagram account, probably the Instagram account is a little quicker to see. I do a lot of what I ate in a day. I only eat two meals a day. I eat lunch. That's my first meal of the day, and that's just because after I lost weight, I was really tuning into my hunger drive and I realized that I was eating breakfast even though I wasn't hungry. I like to exercise first thing in the morning. Tom and I go for a four mile walk every morning and I don't like to eat before I go for my walk. And what I discovered is when I was getting back home, I was just automatically eating because that had become a habit, but I wasn't really hungry. And so I decided to start waiting until I was really hungry to eat. And for me, that's usually lunch. Now, once in a while, if I had, if I ate like really light the day before, I might have hunger mid morning. And so I'll go ahead and eat something, but usually lunch is my first meal of the day. So what you'll see, the reason I'm telling you that is on my Instagram account for what I ate in a day, you'll just see usually two meals and maybe one snack. And then a lot of people will ask, well, what did you have for breakfast? Well, I didn't eat breakfast because I don't usually eat breakfast. So I would check the Instagram account because you can see all the pictures right there without a lot of text. And then you can just click on those and see what we eat in a day. And we haven't done videos because we're oftentimes in two different places at lunchtime and I don't know how we would do the video. I guess we could video tape diff separate meals and you could put them all together. I know, we'll have to work on you that. You could be a movie master for um, that. Angelina's asking about, uh, do we eat roasted nuts? Um, and the short answer is no. no. Um, so, But not that we don't encounter nuts in some if we go to a vegan restaurant and it's somebody's birthday there might be nuts in the in the yeah fruit, we don't typically crust, i don't typically uh cook with nuts just because of the high calorie density because we try to keep at 600 calories or less per pound on the food that we eat if you google calorie density or check on youtube for calorie density you will see that uh, Jeff Novick, who's a registered dietitian, has a video on it, and Chef AJ has a wonderful video all about calorie density. So because I'm hypothyroid, I gain weight super easy, and it just seems like the older we are, you know, the little more difficult it can be to regulate your weight and nuts being high fat and high calorie density, it's a little more hard to 
manage eating a small quantity of those. That's an easy hand to mouth food that's very easy to overeat. And you know, it's easy to consume hundreds of calories in nuts in a very short amount of time. So I don't typically, typically cook with them and we don't typically eat those on a daily basis. But like Tom said, if we go to maybe a vegan restaurant, if there's a little drizzle of a cashew sauce on a taco or something, that's, you know, yeah, we're it's okay. an ingredient uh, in something in a restaurant. I, I used to, uh, we used to buy the almonds from Costco. The that unsalted was, raw. The, and that was one of my, you know, hand to mouth snacks, but I learned that that's just not a good idea. And since it we puts stopped, on weight. Since we stopped buying those uh, at the first of the year, then my belts and my pants fit much nicer. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, the, it was an uh, unregulated situation and, and we've, had a lot of lectures about unconscious eating and anytime you can avoid unconscious eating it's a good idea right so so if i'm cooking for company then i might make like a cashew sauce or something for company or a salad dressing with some cashews in it or um, a slaw dressing or something with a small amount of cashews in it but we don't we don't eat a lot of them there's nothing wrong with them they're super healthy and they're delicious and if i could eat them and not gain weight i certainly would okay anything else i think we're all caught up oh. so we're about 50 minutes in so. okay marie says love your dress thank you so much <laughs> i appreciate that so i hope this helps you on the potatoes and uh, if you have any more questions if you have ideas for our uh, tuesday with tammy then please leave us a comment either with the video or you can send me an email at tammy at nutmegnotebook.com and give me your ideas. Some people have been writing to us and giving us some ideas on topics that they would like us to cover. And be sure and check out Dr. McDougall's The Starch Solution if you're concerned and worried about eating starch. I highly recommend eating starch because it can help you lose weight and, and help we, we you keep that, it off. We have that on our Amazon shop page, I presume. Yeah. I think so. A okay. lot of things that we talked about today, we have videos for, or we have blog posts, or we also do have an Amazon uh, affiliate shop page where we put a lot of our favorite things on there. And that's amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash nutmeg notebook. So you can put that in the... Yeah, I'll put it on the description. Yeah. So we thank you guys so much for watching today. We really appreciate it. We have the loveliest people that leave us wonderful comments. And we thank you from the bottom of our heart. It's a real pleasure. We hope that we can meet a lot of you in person someday. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. That helps our ratings here on YouTube. And if you would subscribe to the channel, next to the subscribe tab, which is underneath the video, is a little icon of a bell. If you click on that bell, every time we have a new video, you will get a notification that we have a new video. Does it also con let them know when we've gone live? It will ping them, yes. It, yeah. it, it does a little, Your if you have notifications turned on on your phone, uh -huh. um, then it sends a little text there that says Nutmeg Notebook is live. Okay, so and, do that so that you yeah. won't miss a live. Today was kind of crazy with it being my birthday, so we didn't even have time to go on. And we usually, we post that we're going to be going live and at what time, but today was a little crazy for us, so that didn't happen. And if you haven't subscribed to the blog, please go over to nutmegnotebook.com and become a subscriber. Subscribers get two exclusive recipes that are only for subscribers. So you don't want to miss out on that. And there's hundreds of recipes on nutmegnotebook.com that we have yet to make videos for. So we often laugh that we need 36 hour days instead of 24 because our to-do list is so long. There's so much that we want to share with you guys. We just don't have enough time. So sometimes life gets in the way of that. But we thank you for watching today. And I'm Tammy. And Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy, 
and stay, stay healthy, healthy one, one meal, meal at a time. time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.